the webinar should run for about 20 minutes and we'll be looking at using grids and guides, creative ways to organise your page and using masks in your design. All right, so let's jump into it. Starting with grids and guides. So I'll start by saying that using the grids or guides is completely up to you. It's not necessary to the creation of your album, but you might find it helpful um, with keeping things orderly and aligned on your page. So let's start with guides. The editor has a feature called Smart Guides, which helps you automatically align items on the page. When you drag one photo next to another, you'll see it jump in line with the other photo. And this is the Smart Guides in action. You can access this the settings for the guides in the main menu under view, grids and guides and smart guide settings. I'll show you that a bit later. By default, guides for the entire page will be shown in the pink colour and object guides will be shown in lime green. So the object guides are things like text boxes, photos, scrapbook items and more. If you want to turn them off, you can just untick the boxes in the smart guide settings. Next, uh, let's look at grid, sorry, yeah, grids. <laughs> um, it's exactly as it sounds. You can turn on a virtual grid for your album, which can help you measure distance between items on the page. Or you might want to align items to the virtual grid itself. Turning on the grid is in the same menu as guides. So you go to view, grids and guides, and then show guide, so, show, sorry, show grid. And here's how it looks when you've got your grid turned on. Um, usually the grid is, it shows you one centimetre between each line in the grid, but you can also adjust um, in, the, in the grid settings, you can change it to show you like one, every millimetre or whatever you want to see. Um, and so now here's, oh, so, I'll show you a basic example of why you might want to use the grids. Grids are a great way of establishing a repetition, so like a repetitious look and layout for your project. So in this example, I've got two pages that are following a similar pattern. I know the images on each page are aligned um, and to, to the first line of the grid, and I know each of my text boxes is aligned in a similar way. So I don't have to be worried that things will look out of place. And here's how it looks with the grids turned off. So it all looks nice and neat. Okay, now let's have a look at some creative ways to organise your page. Often we have favourite photos that we want to feature more prominently than, than others. The easiest way to achieve this is by making the photo take up the entire page but you can go one step further by making it take up the entire double page spread. If you're making a classic bound photo book, this will work best if there are no important elements in the centre of the photo, because those parts will get lost a little bit in the binding. You can see here one example that works and one example that doesn't. The example on the right is better suited to taking up a single page because otherwise the figure figures in the middle disappear into the middle of the book. So here's a better example of arranging the photo, the wedding photo there. It's now a full single page image and it's no longer interrupted by the gutter of the book. You can take this one step further and make it partially stretch across the middle of the book onto the next page, as long as you're not cutting off any important elements of the photo. So it's an effective way of linking the two pages together so they become one design and not two separate pages. If you joined our previous webinar, you might remember the overlap technique that we applied to the cover design. So this can also be applied to your inside pages. This involves arranging images on top of each other so that they overlap. Here's a very simple example on the overlap technique. Again, you wanna make sure you're not blocking any important elements in your photo. And we can take it one step further by adding a border to the top image. That's the same, you can make it the same color as the page background. 
So it creates a pretty cool effect there. Here are some more examples. You can see that you'll need, these ones you'll need to change the border to the same color as the background to get the cut out look. Also, you can always play around with the border size to see what looks best. So you can make the border thicker or thinner. Again, I'll show you this soon in the editor. And remember, the overlap technique isn't limited to just photos. Sometimes it looks good with text also. Usually with some bold headings, it looks better. Again, just play around to see what looks best. Moving on to masks. So let's have a quick refresher on what masks, masks are and how to use them. So masks are found at the bottom tab of the editor and as the name suggests, it masks part of your photo. Essentially, it hides the outside parts of your photo. So depending on which mask you choose will determine what, you, what your photo will look like. In this example, I've used a rounded mask and you can see how it looks once applied. You can use masks however you want in your design. They can look great by themselves on top of, a, say, a textured background, or you can place them on the top of images like the example on this slide on the right hand side. One great thing about masks is that some of them can make the edges of, of your photo sem, sort of semi-transparent, which allows you to kind of blend photos together. Now in this slide, I'm gonna run through um, an example now. So we have four images on the page to begin with. Next, I'm going to apply one of the masks that has a soft or fuzzy edge to it. So you can see I've applied that to each of the photos. You can see how the edges of the photos now have a soft faded look to them. And then lastly, I can click and drag my images closer together so that parts of them are overlapping. And it now creates a soft blending, blended collage look. So you could do this with just two photos or a whole series if you want. All right, so let's jump into the editor and I'm gonna show you a few of these things now. So I've already got the download editor open. Um, I've got a, a project open and I've put a few photos in my picture list on the left hand side and I've got a blank page here to have a play around with. So the first thing I'll show you is just how to turn on your grids and guides. So if you click on the view menu at the top <clears throat> and then you can click on grids and guides and as we talked about there's the smart guide settings. This is <clears throat> to show you um, how photos align, align with each other. I can show, I'll show you that in a minute. And you can also click on the view menu, grids and guides, and then show grid. And on my page, it seems to have done, it looks like it's done every half a centimeter. Um, you can click on view, grids and guides, and then um, grid settings. And yeah, it's actually showing one centimeter between, uh, so the it's it's showing a, every second line is a centimeter, and it's dividing it into two. So if I change it to one, and click OK, it now shows every centimeter without any breaks. All right, um, we'll just turn that off. View grids and guides, and um, show grid. Is, no, that's not what I wanted to do. View grids and guides. Hide grid is what we want. All right, so that's that. Um, just quickly to show you the um, the bit about if you want to um, snap photos to so that they're aligned. So say I've got two photos on the page. If I want them to be left to be aligned at the left, I move this one to. Hang on, move it to the left and you see how these green lines show up? That shows me that they are aligned at the left, the right and the centre of the photo. Um, so that's quite useful. Okay, next let's look at adding a photo. We were talking about making a really nice photo take up your, your whole spread. So I've got this photo here of the Arc de Triomphe. <clears throat> um, if I right click on it, I can choose fit and then fit to spread. And it fits it to the whole spread. The only problem is if I crop it, you see it 
because of the size of my page, I've got a um, <clears throat> 12 by 12 inch book. It doesn't fit that well on the page and sort of the middle of my um, highlight of the image sits right on the, um, the binding area. So it's not going to work that well as a double page spread. Um, I might have, there may be other photos that work better. For example, this um, Paris one might work better. You can just crop it slightly. Again, it's not perfect, but it, it, it doesn't work too badly. Um, anyway, let's go back. We'll go back to the Art de Triomphe. So if I change my mind and want it just as a single page, I can go fit and fit to page. And that will actually just put it on a single page. Um, I can double click on it just to crop it and make sure that I've got what I want in the photo and click OK. To make this a little bit more exciting, so I might want to put some other some photos on the page opposite, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to click on this right, the, the blue dot on the right edge of the photo and I can just spread it a bit more over to the next page so that it as we talked about, it connects the two pages. I'm going to have to crop it again because it's um, it's cropped out what I want. We'll just leave it like that. It doesn't have to be perfect, but there we go. So now I want to add, an, I might add my um, Eiffel Tower to the opposite page and we might do this nice, I'll show you the overlap technique. So I'm going to make it a bit bigger. I'll just um, hold down my shift key while I make it bigger so I keep the same proportions in the photo and I can overlap it here like so. Um, I can place a border around it if I, uh, if I wish. So on the right hand side of my screen, if we click on this pencil and paper at the top, I then see border. I can tick the border box. I want the border to be white because my background's white. And I can make the border size a bit bigger just by moving this slider to make it stand out a bit more. Um, and so that could work nicely for me. Um, I actually personally think the Eiffel Tower is probably more of a landmark than the Arc de Triomphe. So I can actually swap these photos. If I click on the Eiffel Tower one and hold my mouse down on it, I get this green plus sign and I can just move it there and it'll swap the two photos. So I may find I prefer it that way. Um, I can also add some text. So let's add a text box. I'll just pop it up here. And I'm just going to say um, Paris by night. And I'm going to choose a nice, I actually quite like, um, I don't know if anyone saw last week's webinar, but I used a font called Special Elite, which I've decided I really like. So I'm just going to find that again. Uh, if I click on special S for special and we've got to scroll down through all my S fonts. There it is, special elite. I'm going to make a big, maybe a 72 point font. Now my colours, because my photo is quite dark, I probably want my text to be white. The problem is it's going to get lost with my white background. So let's have a fiddle and we're going to change our this, this is all, you can experiment with all of this and you can see what you like and change things around. I'm going to change my background to be black. So if I click on this background tab here and I choose black for my right hand page and I might want to change my border for that photo to black as well. So we'll go back to border and we'll just change the color of the border to black. Now you can decide whether you prefer black or white. I think they both look quite good. Um, but you know, that that's sort of quite a nice page. Um, just to give you an example of some things you can do. All right, let's have a bit of a look at masks. Um, so we'll uh, get a new page up and I'm just gonna grab a photo here. Here's a lovely photo I have of a couple of dogs. One of them's mine, one of them's a friend's. And we might just zoom in on them a little bit. Look, so we're cropping the photo and we're just gonna bring them in nice and close. And we might just wanna apply a mask. So down the bottom here, we have page styles, mask, backgrounds, etc. We'll click on masks. <clears throat> and here you can see all the different mask options. Um, so I could add this one, which looks quite nice. 
Um, there's lots of them to choose from. There's actually one that does a kind of, I know that one doesn't work because I'm losing part of the dog. There's, I might go with the circle. And that looks kind of cute. We can make them a bit bigger. Whoops, we just have to not crop them out there. But there you go, that, that's quite a nice effect if you want to do something like that. I also talked about putting a mask on the entire page. So say I was to put a background on the whole page. Let's use a, um, uh, just a nice, I don't know, this one will do, pink background. Um, and if I was to go back to masks and say apply this mask, it will actually apply it to the whole background. It doesn't really work with what I'm doing there, but that's just something you might find interesting or you might want to use for something. Um, I'll just delete that background for now. And then lastly, I'll show you how you can make that collage of different photos. So I've got a few photos here. I'm just going to pop these ones on the page. I've got, it's, this will be similar to the one I showed you in the slideshow because I've got two portrait photos and two landscape photos. Um, so we've got that. We'll try and um, make them all, I'm not sure how I'm going to do this yet, but we'll try and resize them by if you so when you hold down the shift key um, it makes them bigger without losing any of the image um, actually I'll just highlight both by holding shift and we'll make those ones a bit bigger and we can leave these ones smaller here doesn't matter oh, there we, we'll, we'll just leave it for now we'll have, see you have to play around with it a little bit Anyway, let's apply a mask. So this one, the one that um, I showed you in the slide shows this second one along and it gives it a nice soft uh, feeling to the photos. Just make sure you don't cut off any of the faces in the people there. If, if you're cutting off faces, you might need to look at a different mask or not use them at all. Um, so you can see them all there on the page. And then what we can do, actually we'll make these two a bit bigger. And then you can just sort of bring them all in together like this, just drag them in, drag them in, and drag them in. And you've kind of got this, I'm not doing it very well. <laughs> I'm sure you guys can do it better than me. Um, but there you go, you've got a bit of a, um, a lovely collage effect. And because these are all such light photos, it might look better with a black background. Uh, up to you something you can think about but um yeah there's a few few options of things you can do there playing with masks okay well that's all i've got to show you today so um now's a really good time to send me questions if you have any and while you're sending your questions i will just do a quick recap of what we've talked about um so just remember so um guides are there to help you automatically align your photos on the page and text as well um, use grids if you want to be pixel perfect with your design maximize your feature photo by extending it across the spread or halfway across the spread and uh, use masks to add a creative touch to your design and don't forget, just play around to find out what works for you. If you like what you see on the page, then that's how it's going to print. So you should like it once it gets printed. Just be, be creative, have some fun with it. All right, let's see if we have any queries. Just bear with me for one moment. Right, no questions at all. Sounds like it's all making sense to you. Um, please, if you do find you have any questions later, you're always welcome to call us. Um, as you know, and I've told you this every time, um, your, our customer service team are here Monday to Friday from 9am to 5pm Melbourne time. And we're very happy to answer any of your queries. Um, our phone number is 1300 553 you can also reach us by email, service at albumworks.com.au. 
or you can talk to us via live chat from our website. 